This is the second part of the Tide Bottle project. In the first part, all we did was make the layout sketches for the bottle. And in this part, from those layout sketches, we will make a boundary that represents the overall shape of the bottle. We're going to offset that boundary inwards by about two millimeters. And that's going to be used for the label surface. We will trim out a circular opening for the label surface. Then we will trim the label surface itself, leaving us with a gap for the handle, and a gap for a step that will blend from the main bottle down to the label surface. We'll put a split line across the bottle, which will cause this edge to begin and end in a predictable location. We will add a boundary surface, which will be the step that bridges from the label surface to the main bottle. And finally, we will finish this video up by knitting these surfaces together. As you can see from my numbered steps and my feature tree, this will take us from steps 8 to 19, which is about 12 or 13 steps. So I'm going to roll back to step 7, turn my sketches back on take a look at the sketches we made in the first video and spend a lot of time focusing on getting the sketch on the middle plane just so. And I spent a lot of time getting this sketch just right. And it was important that this area here, which is part of the overall bottle, was shaped properly. That this area here was nice and smooth, which will become the label zone. In this area over here, which is also part of the outer bottle and also forms part of the handle. So now what I'm going to do is make some new sketches that are going to copy the contour from the bottom layout, the contours from the middle layout, and then finally the neck, and also this outer curve here and this outer curve here. So I'll start with the bottom by making a new sketch on the top plane. All I have to do is just copy this curve from that sketch and finish. The next is to copy this sketch from the middle layout on my middle plane. I don't need all these lines, I just need the ones that make this one contiguous curve. So using convert entities, copy here, 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 and this last piece finish that sketch on my neck plane. Yet another new sketch, copying this circle. And I only need one half of it, so I will draw a center line that will split that in half. And using my trim, cut away the back piece and finish that sketch. The last sketch to copy will just be this contour and this contour, which I can put into one sketch. Copying this line with convert entities and this line with convert entities and finish that sketch. Now I'm going to hide all my layout sketches, just leaving the ones that I copied. And here we see the skeleton that will form our boundary. So going to our surfaces, boundary surface, in direction one, I will select these curves. In direction two, I will use the selection manager to select this curve and this curve. Let me turn off the zebra stripes and curvature combs so we can see that a little more clearly. So right clicking, selection manager, and I will grab this curve from my copied sketch and selection manager again this curve from my copied sketch and because we are going to mirror this to the other side later on I want to make sure that this curve is set to normal to profile and the same with this curve and here we have the boundary that will form our basic bottle and it looks pretty good. We don't see any weird pinches or creases along here in this area that will eventually become the label area. Looks pretty good too. 
Let's just turn on curvature for a moment. And we see that in this area here, we transition from the blue to the green. The green gets a little darker in here, but the thing that you don't want to see is any red stripes going through here. If you do, that means you have an overly tight radius here. You want this to blend out nicely into this area without any creases that would be indicated by some red zones. So turning this back off, our actual label area, which is here, will not be this surface here, but will be inset from this surface two to three millimeters. So what we want to do is offset this surface inward, going back to our surfaces, and offset surface, selecting this surface, make sure that it's offsetting inward about two millimeters. And there we see the surface that will become our label surface after we trim everything away. Going back to our front view and making our front layout visible again, what we want to do is cut out a hole in our main surface that will give us an opening for that recessed label. So on our front plane, making a new sketch, all we have to do is copy this element here, finish the sketch, We'll use that sketch to trim out a hole here. So surfaces, trim surface, standard. Here's our trim tool. And we want to remove this center section from our outer surface, not the surface that we offset inward. So just clicking on that, getting rid of that surface. And when I rotate this way, we can now see the hole inner boundary and the surface that was inset two millimeters inward which is going to become our actual label surface. If we look at this from the left now we can see that we got this nice arc to the edge that's formed when we trimmed out that circle. This is something that we were aiming for when we were so careful about how we drew our layout sketch. If you don't like the way yours looks you might want to go back and tweak that layout on the middle plane. Going back to my front view, my next step is to trim back the actual label surface. You remember that it's got a curved edge here, which we can see when we turn on our handle layout. On our front plane, making a new sketch, I'm going to take this edge here and offset this inward four to five millimeters. So using offset entities, Reverse that. I'll make that about four millimeters and I will copy this edge here using convert entities and then trim away all of the excess leaving the perimeter that will be my actual label surface. I can use this to trim away the unneeded parts so trim surface. Here's my trim tool the sketch that I was just making I think I'll use keep selections in this case, mouse over this area here, and finish. Let's turn off our sketches for a moment. And now we see the outer bottle surface and the actual label surface. And if I roll the view over here, we can see that this is inset in that two millimeters. We now need to build a bridge that will be a step going from the outer bottle to the label surface. We're going to do that with a boundary. Now if I try to make a boundary from this edge to this edge, I'm going to have a little problem as I'll show you. I'll just click on this edge here and this edge here. Immediately I get an error. I'll redo that again so we can see what the error is. We see the error says boundary feature curves must all be closed or all be open. Mixed cases are not allowed. So what does that mean? I'm trying to use an edge that is open and this edge here closes on itself as one continuous circle. You can have an open edge go to an open edge or a closed edge go to a closed edge, but as SolidWorks has just told me, we can't have a mixed situation here. So we can't use this edge going in a continuous circle. So I'll 
x out of the boundary here, and we'll solve that problem by simply splitting this surface so that this edge will start here and end here. Going back to turning on my sketches, what I'm going to do is just draw a line going across at an angle that will connect from this point to this point. So making a new sketch on my front plane and drawing a line that will split this entire bottle. So it's got to go above the bottle here, below the bottle here. I'll make a coincident relation from this point in my layout sketch to this new line and from this point in my layout to this new line. Now I can say insert curve split line selecting this outer bottle surface. What it does is it splits this face in two but it leaves this still as a single surface body. Now I have an open edge and an open edge in order to make my boundary. So going back to my boundary surface all I have to do is click on this edge and this edge and I want to make this edge tangency to face and I'm going to just leave this edge here actually I did the wrong one I'll make this none and I will make the first edge tangency to face so now this surface is curving right into here and I have an intentional sharp edge here if you want you can experiment with changing this control to curvature to face and you see it does make a little bit of a difference and you can also play around with your tangency influence here or your tangent length. So let's take a look at the front view of this. And the last step for this video is simply to knit all these pieces back together. So just going to knit surface. We've got three surfaces to knit together. This one, the step, and the label surface. There we are, a good start on our bottle. I'll mention here, in a previous video, I didn't take care to make sure that this center section had a good looking surface. I was worried more about how the outer bottle looked once the circle was trimmed out of it. As a result, I ended up building the label surface separately. If you're not happy with your label surface in here after insetting it by the two millimeters, you might consider building this surface separately so that it's nice and smooth. I can show how to do that, but not in this video. I'll leave that for the very end of this series. That requires about six additional steps, and I don't want to bog this video down with that. So if you've taken care to make sure that this middle layout sketch was nicely done, then you don't have to bother with all that. You'll automatically get this area producing a nice looking label surface. That concludes this video. In the next video, we will work on getting the handle area constructed.